Hello? Anybody out there? Auto warranty renewals right from your WordPress site. My God, the Dukes are going to corner the entire frozen orange juice market. These stories and much more on today's episode of MSP Dispatch. Today's episode of MSP Dispatch is brought to you by Cyber Drains Capture the Flag, a CTF oriented at system administrators and engineers instead of cybersecurity experts. This event is designed to test the skills of everyone in the MSP space so that they can show off what they can do. Beginning February 14th, 2023, with no cost to enter, anyone anywhere in the world is welcome to join up to 1,000 players. And to get an idea of the amazing prizes up for grabs, take a look at last year's awards, including a streamer starter pack, a PS5, a Nintendo Switch, and thousands of dollars in Amazon gift cards, plus more. Be sure to visit ctf.cyberdrain.com to register today. Good morning and welcome to the January 27th episode of MSP Dispatch, your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. I'm Ray Rossini, joined as always by my co-host, Mr. Tony Francisco. How you doing, Tony? Good, brother. Good. I'm in the yellow. Eyebrows on fleek. Here with my boy. Talk to me. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling especially special because I have. Uh, I just had some custom shirts and suits ordered, and they just finally came in. Uh, Do tell. It's, it's like twelve weeks to come in, but they just came in today, and I'm so excited. <laughs> so so excited. So you you know what I'm not excited about though. Mm. <sighs> scientists this story and i apologize because i feel like every time we cover cover one of these stories we're getting closer and closer to skynet um scientists create shape-shifting humanoid robot that can liquefy and reform that is the article that uh and this is a banter topic proposed by our own media editor phil buck um I bring this up because it's terrifying because this is the T-1000, is it not? Am, am I? This like, is not close to Skynet. This is Skynet. You, what, who, who, what, what channel are you on? This is close to Skynet. I can literally show you a T-2 movie that has that exact scene with people chasing him right through the bars. It, 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 it's ridiculous because like it feels like we skipped the wars we skipped the sentience we went straight and we skipped the original terminator and went straight to the t-1000 like how ridiculous is that it, has anyone why are we building this stuff has anyone seen these movies before <laughs> <laughs> no and so and okay so i'll give you a little a little uh uh piece of information robert patrick the actor that played the t-1000 so he to train for the role prior to the movie he trained running without taking big breaths and breathing through his nose so that because a robot doesn't breathe through their mouth, right? They don't breathe to run. So he learned to, and he got so fast. He was actually catching up to the motorcycle and the, the garage scene where he's chasing John Connor out. Um, and they said it was uncanny because if you look, there's only one time in the entire movie that he blinks. Like he was that committed to, to the action. I think that's absolutely amazing. I love those little Easter eggs. But uh, awesome. you know what else I love, Tony? The news. So let's get into the news. Straight my first story from businessplus.ie. Microsoft restores cloud services after a global outage. Microsoft said it has fully restored its cloud services after a networking outage took its Azure cloud platform offline on Wednesday, downing workplace services such as Teams and Outlook used by hundreds of millions worldwide. The company did not disclose the number of users affected, but data from Down Detector showed thousands of incidents on several continents, including the Americas, Europe, Asia Pacific, and the Middle East and Africa. Ray, I have questions, questions, questions for you. Now, I know we've never talked about outages. We've never talked about security issues. We've never talked about backup plans and redundancy. Ever, um, ever, ever. Um, and you know, it'd be really cool since it's never been done before. Have a, uh, maybe we should have a computer inside NORAD that controls the nukes. Uh, say once in a while, would, would you like to play a game? That's another I've, good. Cause I've heard of NORAD. That's where the uh, Santa tracker is, right? <laughs> no, yes yes <laughs> oh my gosh it's it i feel like all the things that we've talked about are happening over and over and over again so my question to you is what can you do 
for an Azure global outage? What is what is your suggestion? Because at the end of the day, I mean, let's just call it as it is. Redundancy is a challenge, and just like any challenge, um, it, it's it's like riding a horse. If you're if if it feels comfortable when you're doing it, you're doing it wrong. So. Um, Tell me what it, what it, what can we suggest to people to address a global outage? That that is just as far left as my cocaine reference last episode. <laughs> <laughs> if the horse is comfortable, you're not doing it right. Now, uh, so okay. So first of all, I will not have you impugn the reliability and, and confidence we have in Microsoft 359. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, outages are part of life. It's it's just one thing, it's something you have to deal with. And this is where I say nothing is unique, nothing is special, except for you, because your mother was right, you're wonderful. But everything else in business is exactly the same. Look at it. If you absolutely need it to function, have a backup plan for it. So in terms of teams, if you abs- if you're a fully remote company and you absolutely need to be able to collaborate, make sure you have a backup method a Discord, a Slack, text messages. Our, ours is our PBX portal. If Teams goes out, we can message each other on our PBX portal. But the, the point is this, we're global, we're remote, we need to collaborate. It's not an option of Teams being down. So you have to have a backup plan. And MSP should be really, really good at backup plans, right? Tony, yes? <laughs> the whole MSP audience right now is saying, yeah, hey, hold on. Hold on. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't, I just don't know what to say because I feel again, like this is something that we talk about every single episode, but through a different theme, it's all the same. I mean, what do they say? There's seven different types of movies and that's all the movies there are. Uh, this is what we call Matt and say, but it is, if, if we were talking about computer backup, an MSP wouldn't think twice. They would have a game plan, maybe workstations, definitely servers, definitely user profile. They would have a game plan. They wouldn't think twice about it. But because it's teams or because it's communication, they may not see it in the same sense. And that's why I'm saying it's not unique. If there's a system they need, if there's a business function they need to absolutely have access to 100%, then they need to have backup plans. QuickBooks Online, another good example. I'm not saying they went down, but I'm saying if your business needs to write checks every single day and log entries every single day, plan for what you're going to do when QB goes out. And if it doesn't, it doesn't great, but plan anyway. Can, can, and this is an opportunity for the MSP market that we serve. Um, everyone's going to have their core pillars, their their core calcified stack of technologies and applications. Um, and the QBRs, every, every customer, they need them, they don't want to do them. But why can't you say, let's go to a OMG plan? Azure global outage just happened on Wednesday. Don't say that it's unlikely or don't say it's impossible. It's unlikely in a lot of cases, but why can't you have an OMG plan where, Hey, there's another server that we have in house that we can synchronize the users. And this is what you can use for a a backup plan or discord, or because maybe they use uh, Azure as well. You you never know, but something, uh, Uh, but, but I'm thinking from the MSP's perspective, this is a perfect opportunity to talk to your customers about those what if scenarios um because it just happened yeah it's it's uh like matt fox saying in chat it's not if it's when right it's when it's going to happen so oh, man. Well, let you know I what think let, let, these might have something to say about it maybe if they like put something in the comments or in the discord oh. i think they can go to the discord and talk back at us that's what we've been doing all week since the ep- <laughs> since the last episode so a lot of topics yeah. you know security outages are horrible I guess the only thing really worse, in my opinion, are security hacks at like large scales because in security, like a, a, but, but outages, they'll get fixed. But Ray, you have good news for us, right? And I'm afraid I don't have good news. I do have numbers though. In our second top story in security, over 4,500 WordPress sites hacked to redirect visitors to sketchy ad pages written by Ravi Lakshmanan on The Hacker News. The latest operation of malware campaign believed to have started in 2017 has affected more than 4,500 WordPress sites. According to data from urlscan.io, the latest actively started on December 26, 2022. A wave detected in early December affected more than 3,600 sites, and the attack in September impacted more than 7,000. 
The infections involve the injection of obfuscated JavaScript hosted on a malicious domain designed to redirect visitors to unwanted sites. Securi, a security website, stated that the recent months have seen the malware campaign go from fake CAPTCHA, push notification scam pages, to black hat ad networks that alternate between legitimate and malicious websites. To counter these threats, WordPress site owners are advised to change their passwords, update installed themes and plugins, and remove unused ones. Tony, I, I'm sure over your your illustrious career, you've installed at least one WordPress site at some point, right? Just, 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 just one or two hundred. See, yes. I remember the days of like the WordPress sites where you had to update these things manually, and Ooh. thankfully, there's auto updating now, which is great. Which also breaks plugins half the time. There's a plugin to update your plugins, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, but like it, this is the Windows Update conundrum, right? Do you let it auto update and possibly break your site? Or do you do it manually and possibly miss a zero day, right? Personally, my, and this is my personal opinion, and I don't run our web servers, so don't ask me for MSV Media. But, you know, the stuff, my little personal pet projects, I set it to auto update and WordPress will email you when you when it updates. So you immediately go in and you have a little, you know, check to make sure it works like you would do after any update, right? And if it's broken, you fix it. And if it's not broken, you're good. No big deal. Um, and that to me is much more safe than just letting this happen. Where do you fall in the auto update camp? Are you set it and forget it? Or are you like stay and pray? What, what's your, what's your method? Well, we're talking about two different things. Uh, if we're talking about operating systems at the desktop level, that is a very real time. That is analogous to um, outages or blips um, in telco. Ooh, that there's no such thing as an outage, uh, a blip in telco, in email hosting. Oh man, we had like a hundred blips a day, and no one noticed. It was just a big delay in email, and and rest assured, every time I talk to the telco side, I'm like, that sucks to do what you guys do. You you know that, and they're like, ah, oh, it's just constant stress, just constant. Like it's like every moment you're looking, but but on our side, like ah, oh, we'll just fail over to another front end server, and 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 people go, oh, it's an extra thirty second delay. You know, it must be an email traffic issue. Sure, no problem. Uh, what I'm trying to get to is that when we're talking about websites, there is real time so for desktop operating systems um, uh, going down. And then there's websites, which you can have, my personal opinion, best practice, um, or something I practiced for decades. I would have primary website and I would have v1.primarywebsite.com, v2.primarywebsite.com, etc. cetera. Um, and then I would run my deployment updates on v1 and see what happened and i would constantly keep a working version of that um on v2 and i could do experimentation across the board without ever affecting anything in production environment that is just my opinion and matt's saying load balancer load balancer i understand lo this is before you had your fancy f5 load balancers there was no such you know what also the load balancer was your, which also <laughs> had this, for the record <laughs> The look of disappointment is that it's more of a, a load balancer in conjunction with a deployment uh, script or procedure that's going to give you multiple versions that you can turn back the time on like a time machine should something go wrong. If all you're hell way through, too technical, you, you know what the load balancer was? Load balancer that goes to that lovely under construction page so you can figure out what the hell's going on with the actual. That, that's site it's pulling out the, in the middle of an update. Pulling out the Cat Five cable and plugging into the other the other NIC. That's that's you that's get the, the other Hades mode. You, click, click. You, you unplug the US Robotics. You go, <laughs> and, then and, and if you want to know, and if you want to know why Matt Fox is so has time machines on the brain and going back in time, go talk to him on Discord. I, I'm just going to tease it oh. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt knows his stuff. MSP people, you, that, that he's, he's one of you. He's he's one of your tribe members here behind the scenes, basically poking us and prodding us. We probably and, should hear from everyone else, though. That's uh, Absolutely. And, and something uh, good to point out, uh, Matt brought this up in the chat. Um, this is this specific issue was a was a file folder permission issue. It was not an update issue. It doesn't change a damn thing that, that we said. Um, and... Uh, as far as permissions, let somebody else do it. <laughs> oh no, let somebody else run your damn website. I don't know. I'm just talking to my ass. MSPs, tell us what's going on, please. Actually, you know what? Let let an expert do it, but or let somebody else do it. But make sure you train them first, right, Tony?
Definitely train your staff. Straight from Bloomberg.com, the New York Stock Exchange mayhem was trained to a, traced to a staffer who left a backup system running. On Tuesday, the New York Stock Exchange employee failed to shut down properly Surmax disaster recovery system, leading to a disaster. The chaos affected more than 250 companies, including Wells Fargo, McDonald's, Walmart, and Morgan Stanley. In some cases, sending stock prices swinging by 25% in a matter of minutes. Professionals and day traders are rattled and waiting for the exchange to elaborate on what it publicly called, quote, a manual error involving its, quote, disaster recovery configuration. Ray, back everything up, back everything up, back everything up. We have to kind of put a little footnote in there. Make sure you train everyone when you run these backups. I, 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 do I have to say that? You know, you know what gets me about this story? It's that that their, their actual processes, after everybody's done, they go through and they shut down systems manually and then bring systems up manually. Now, if anybody's ever run a data center, you know you absolutely have a startup sequence. You cannot just light up everything at the same time. You have a stand down sequence too. That's why power losses are so dangerous. Uh, and turning everything on at the same time, you get these power surges that can take everything down. And you, you do think staggered, that is, that is standard process. But the data centers, you shut things down very, 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 very rarely. Like the, these are meant to be toasters. These are meant to operate. You don't, you don't yep. shut, you don't shut a d- d- data center down. Like you, you, you have to right. assume that whatever is in the data center, when you shut it down, it's not going to start back up. You just have to assume right. that. <laughs> well, and that's from my old network engineering days. I mean, there's a number of switches and routers out there that, you know, I, and I'm talking big iron. I'm, I'm talking big boys that like, you know, have years of uptime and you are terrified to turn it off. Like, oh. you're, <laughs> Absolutely. So, so just to, just to add some some clarity to the story, what happens is uh, there's a backup system in Chicago, and the way this works, and I'm just I'm I'm narrating very very high level here, is that every evening the uh, backup system is shut. Or let me rephrase that: while the primary trading mechanism is shut down. This system shuts down uh, to basic the, the the backup system, but the backup system stayed up. And what that means is in the event that the New York Stock Exchange, the primary system failed, the trade the trade queries would go to this failover system. Well, since it had nowhere to go, okay, it treated them as a trade with no real volume associated to it. Now, on Tuesday morning when the system came back online, there was this normal surge that came in from the evening but that didn't happen because these occurred in real time. There was no surge. Consequently, there was no activity. Consequently, everyone who made a trade was now a substantial trade that's not drowned out in this huge flood of morning activity that came in over the evening. So what happened is the backup system wasn't, it's not uh, the, the concept of a data backup system. It's just a backup failover system it was never shut down properly. The point of the entire story is that there has to be some level of autonomy. There has to be a system of checks and rechecks and, and rechecking the, the recheckers um, as much as possible. And that was not done. This was a very manual process. Um, and the, the the consequences were substantial. They're still going through the economic consequences. I heard I read online that they had they, they set aside, I want you to process this, five hundred thousand dollars US a day to handle these types of issues. This wasn't wow. one of the types of issues, if I just process that. Um, <laughs> and this was not in the bucket of, oh, we saved for this. So I'm wondering uh, what the repercussions are financially. Uh, but please, please, please train your staff. It was something as simple as flipping a switch or maybe they tripped over a cord or whatever that is. <sighs> that is nuts. That is absolutely nuts to me. And the financial impact of this, right? Because like they're going back and undoing the trades. They can't even calculate how much like they've spent, they're spending to undo all of this mayhem. I, the potential catastrophe for not having good systems and good redundancies in place is mind boggling. And even with that, when they do have it, dolphin bleep still go south. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> you know, okay. 
let's uh, this is I feel like this is just another variation of the stories that we're talking about but please train your staff and most importantly keep your eyes on the ball that being said Ray let's get into the notable mention In my first notable mention, NVIDIA's eye contact AI is its creepiest update yet, written by Anna Diaz for Polygon.com. NVIDIA has just rolled out an update to its broadcast software for live streaming and video conferencing. The update brings several new features, but the most unnerving for most of the app's users is eye contact. Eye contact is an effect that makes it look like you're maintaining eye contact with the camera. The feature uses AI to replace your eyes with simulated eyes that align with your webcam. Although many users describe eye contact as unsettling, unnerving, or even creepy, NVIDIA said in a blog post that eye contact is intended for content creators who want to maintain eye contact with the camera at all times, even when they're looking at their notes. In my second notable mention, LastPass response to recent security incident, taken from GoTo.com. In late November, LastPass disclosed its systems were compromised for the second time in 2022. We covered this in a previous story on MSP Dispatch, linked somewhere here. GoTo, the owner of LastPass, published an update on its blog in response to the security incident. As per the post, the company's investigation that a threat actor exfiltrated encrypted backups from a third-party cloud storage related to Central, Pro, Join.me, Hamachi, and Remotely Anywhere. Affected information may include account usernames, salted and hashed passwords, and a portion of MFA settings, product settings, and licensing information. LastPass has started contacting affected customers and recommending steps to secure their accounts. It will also reset passwords and reauthorize MFA settings. The company also assured its customers that GoTo does not store full credit card or bank details and does not collect or use personal information such as date of birth, home address, or social security numbers. And in my first notable mention from Reuters.com, IBM cuts 3,900 jobs and misses the annual cash target. IBM Corp. on Wednesday announced 3,900 layoffs, approximately 1.5% of its workforce, as part of its asset divestment and missed its annual cash target, dampening the cheer around beating revenue expectations in the fourth quarter. The company also forecasted annual revenue growth in the mid-single digits on constant currency terms, weaker than the 12% it reported last year, as pandemic-led demand for digitizing businesses has given way to cautious spending by clients amid rising recession fears. And in my next notable mention from bleepingcomputer.com, a new stealthy Python rat malware targets Windows in attacks. A new Python-based malware has been spotted in the wild featuring remote access Trojan rat capabilities to give its operators control over the breach systems. The malware delivered to the target is a Python rat packed into an executable using automated packers like PyInstaller and Py2exe, which can convert Python code into a Windows executable that includes all the libraries required for its ex execution. This approach results in an inflated payload size with version 1.0, the initial, being 14 megs and version 1.6.0, the latest, 32 megs. The more recent version is bigger because it features additional code, more than a thousand lines, and a layer of Fernet encryption. This helps the malware evade detection, and according to Securonix tests, version 1.6.0 of the payload deployed undetected by all but one antivirus engine on VirusTotal. In our new segment, Resources of the Week, we want to highlight some things that you may want to know uh, in your MSP day. Uh, the first one is courtesy of the Reddit sub sysadmin, and there's a thread called Microsoft Ticking Time Bombs, January 2023 edition. It lists several deadlines for several major changes uh, Microsoft is enacting over the coming months, uh, including the way AD permissions are stored, the way uh, Authenticator uh, works with your clients. Uh, we will link it in the show notes. I'm not going to go over every single one, but I want to make sure you're aware of it. And our second Resource of the week. This was presented by Mike Riggs of Fifth Wall and Risk Age. This is a release from CISA with their 2023 planning agenda. It was posted the two days ago. A project for this community, meaning the MSP community, is included. The statement is remote monitoring management vendors, managed service providers, managed security service providers, advanced cybersecurity, and reduced supply 
chain risk for small and medium critical infrastructure entities through collaboration with remote monitoring and management, RMM, managed service providers, and managed security service providers. Those are a lot of words that you should read into because they will affect your daily life. The link again is in the show notes. In our feedback from the YouTubes, Alan Miller says, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> I don't know if that's a, oh, I, you know what? The less I say here, the better, honestly. <laughs> There are plenty of amazing upcoming events taking place across the community. So let's see what's happening this week and next. Today at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, January Channel Pitch presented by The Channel Program. On February 1st and 2nd, an in-person event, Channel Pro SMB Forum, Dallas, Texas. And finally, on February 1st, 2nd, and the 3rd, an in-person event, Zero Trust World, Champions Gate, Florida. And coming from the MSP Media Network this week, we have the MSP Dispatch every Tuesday and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. On February 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Tech Bar opens its doors again for episode 51 featuring Tom Lawrence of Lawrence Systems. And on February 3rd at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Kyle Jackson of ConnectWise joins Aaron Bolton for episode 9 of 38 at 38. Hey everyone, it's Martin here, admin, CEO, and co-founder of the MSP Geek community. And I want to see you at our conference, MSP Geek Conf 2023. It is the premier conference that focuses on the career path of a technician, where you get to own both your personal and your technical skill set, and how to set yourself and your teams up for success. Join us in Orlando on May 21st to the 23rd. Come grow with us, and we'll see you there. So how'd you like today's episode? If you like it, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit it twice. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the YouTubes or your favorite podcatcher. Did you know we also have a Discord where we post stories all week? You can propose your own stories and even vote on which ones we'll cover. As my friend Rich Makey says, make sure to tell a friend. Also be sure to follow us on social media at MSP Media TV. Have any questions? Email news at mspmedia.tv for answers on the next episode or leave us a voicemail 833 833- MSP network. Tony, I have a feeling you're going to go check all your backup policies <laughs> and your WordPress sites. <laughs> oh gosh. And, 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 and go watch the Terminator two again, just so I know what to expect. I just gotta, I mean, it's just a prequel clearly. Obviously. Yeah. No, between that and Boston dynamic dynamics, we are so screwed. Oh my gosh. The whole Boston dynamics here. Here's your tools. Let me jump up, do a backflip. Let me check the watch. Let me do his little, he's doing his little dab. Oh, come on. Dude, th- this is like getting that dog to go up the stairs or open a door. Like they're training it to do these things. And all I'm thinking is if I had a Velociraptor, the last thing I would do is teach it to open a door. <laughs> like, did we not learn from Jurassic park? So it's just yeah. going to happen next. <laughs> so I, I want to hear from the MSP audience. Let us know if uh, you know it, it, this is Skynet or this is Johnny Five. Let us know or tell us on the Discord even better. Uh, but until next episode, everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. Be safe. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network. Hello, anybody out there? Auto. Hello, anybody out there? I got this on purpose just for this, so Phil doesn't have to do all the dolphins. Every time I curse about one of these security issues. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have good news. I have numbers, though. In my second top story in the security section, over 4,500 WordPress sites hacked to redirect... Vic- Other news, I can't speak properly. Okay.
Security, a security website, stated that the recent months have been the malware campaign. Security, a security website, stated that the recent months have seen the security. Too many securities. All right. A new stealthy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The malware delivered to the target is a Python rat packed executable using um from let me go back to the beginning of that um do you see when i move my mouse out pops over the, the notes yeah yeah i see it yeah. you're an anonymous anonymous coyote that's what you are that's what anonymous you're coyote about. yes <laughs> <laughs> are you doing this one from the top or um no uh, i'll just go start off with a new python based malware phil's the studious gerbil i think he just said the studious gerbil I don't know okay. what that means. Yeah, let's just get to <laughs> Okay, okay. This helps the malware evade detection. And according to Securonix tests, version 1.6.0 of the payload deployed undetected by all... Mm, one more time. This helps malware... Two more times. Thank you for getting that Johnny Five reference in. That was perfect. Yeah, let's yeah, do the... Awesome. Let's do the... So how do you like today's show? Uh, just really quick, just that first part. Something happened. In the background was black during that when you first started oh, wow. the outro. So mm -hmm. I mean, I could fix it in post, but it'd be so no, no, easier I could, to. I, I could, easy. Was it yeah. black on black on black? Or was just it black on black? black, black. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get... <laughs> oh, I should not do this for <laughs> recording. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> All right.